Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem two from the Hacker Rank 101 Hack 55 contest entitled Minimize the Sum. The problem states Koka and Satara are playing a game. In this game, Koka gives Satara a number n and n pairs of integers, the ith of which is lirI. -I. Koka wants Satara to create an array A with length n such that for each i, i being between 1 and n, li is less than or equal to ai and that is less than or equal to ri. He also wants Satara to minimize the sum, uh, the summation from i equals 2 to n of the absolute value of the element, the difference between the elements at i and i minus 1. Since Satara is very busy helping Tang save the world, she wants your help to find the minimum sum among all arrays that satisfy Koka's condition. Complete the function minimum sum, which takes in two integer arrays l and r and returns the minimum sum among all arrays that satisfy Koka's condition. And and note that the constraints for this problem, the length of our arrays is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 5, and the values of the elements in that array are going to be between 1 and 10 to the 9, so integers will suffice. Uh, so let's take a look at the example, because this is a very confusing problem statement, but uh, the question itself is actually pretty easy once you wrap your head around it. So this is the example that HackerRank provided us with. We're given uh, the length of our arrays L and R, which is going to be 5. And then the first five values uh, are the elements of our array L. And the second five values on the third line are the values of our elements in R. Uh, so these basically represent ranges. Um, and if we look at this visually, this is what it looks like. So our first two elements from L and R are these values uh, here. So it can be 1, 2, or 3. Our second range is 2 to 5, our third range is 6 to 8, and our fourth and fifth are here. And basically what the question is asking is you have to move on a path in these ranges as you go um, you know, from range to range. So you can choose either 1, 2, or 3 here, you know, uh, 2, 3, 4, or 5 here. And what you want to do is you want to minimize the vertical movement that you have to uh, do when jumping from range to range. Uh, so the optimal solution when doing that is as follows. You start at sort of value 3, and then when you skip to the second range, you can still keep value 3. So there's a 0 uh, delta here, so we don't incur any penalty. Uh, but when we move from the second range to the third range, we have to jump up to at least six so that's what we'll do so we'll incur sort of a three or a penalty of three here and then when we move to our next range down to two we're taking the absolute value uh, and that's going to give us four and then we can just stay at the value two when we move to our final range so that's what that uh, summation is asking us it's basically saying you've got many different paths you can take but you want to find the path that minimizes the amount of sort of uh, vertical movement you'll have from range to range uh, so you can see here that these are the values that we end up taking, 3, 3, 6, 2, 2. Uh, and if we take a look at the absolute, uh, different, the absolute value of the difference between each of these adjacent uh, values, we end up with uh, 3 for the second and third range and 4 for the third and fourth range. And so that in total gives us a value of 7, uh, which is going to be the minimum uh, sum that we can get from sort of moving through these different paths. So it's not really clear at all just from looking at this example what is the algorithm we need to use to solve this so I'm going to show two examples that weren't provided by hacker rank that um, start to give you an idea of what's going to motivate the algorithm that we're going to use to solve this problem uh, so the first example is one where it has a common corridor so you can see here we have for the lower ranges for the lower uh, values of our range one two three and two one and then five four three four five for the upper one. So this creates uh, this sort of range and you can see here pretty clearly uh, that the optimal path is just to stay right on the three. Uh, so it's going to be going moving along the middle and because we never actually changed uh, where we were um, we're going to have an optimal value of zero. Uh, so this basically tells us that whenever you have overlapping ranges you want to try and stay in the intersecting part of that overlapping range. So this by itself is obvious when you look at this example, but it might not be that clear from looking at the last example. 
so the other extreme example is when we have no overlapping ranges and you can see here that the optimal uh, path we want to take is by taking sort of the the uh, values that are closest to each other in the non-intersecting adjacent ranges so this is going to consist of starting at the value 2 jumping to 4 jumping back down to 2 back up to 4 and back down to 2 and so what this shows us is that whenever we have ranges that don't have any intersection we want to uh, obviously jump to the lowest um, part of the next range and you can imagine if uh, so so the difference we're going to occur here is going to be two and four but if we had uh, another range up here that was say from you know six to seven uh, when we took the difference of jumping up again we're gonna it doesn't matter sort of that we chose four the first time when we could have chosen five uh, we're still going to end up taking you know two minus four and then six minus four that's the same as 2 uh, minus 5 uh, plus 6 minus 5. And note you're taking the absolute value of, of those differences. Um, so here we're going to end up with the path 24242, two, two, and that's going to give us uh, a total summation of 8. So using these two facts, we can then sort of start to design our algorithm. So if we jump back to our original example that HackerRank gave us, basically the way we're going to start our algorithm is by just keeping track of the range at our first element. So when we do this, our range is going to be 1 to 3. So that means our starting value can be 1 one of these uh, three values and then when we move to our next range we're going to check to see is there any uh, intersecting uh, you know values of these two ranges and because there is we're going to sort of compress our range to be whatever is the shared intersection of these two ranges so we're going to drop the one and now our range is two to three then when we move to our next range we're going to check is there any intersections of our existing sort of range and uh, the new range and there isn't so at this point uh, we're going to check if our new range is above our existing range or below and because it's above we're then going to take the top value from our range so the three and then we are going to choose the lowest value from this range which will be six and we're going to take the difference and do a plus equals to our sort of running sum uh, so at this point our sum will be equal to three and then we're just going to continue this algorithm so uh, going to our next range there's no intersection and so at this point we reset our range to be equal just to uh, lower bound six upper bound six and so now we're jumping down to two and so we're going to end up doing a plus equals of four and then moving to our last range we're just going to end up uh, staying at two uh, so really the algorithm that we're using where you're keeping track of this range is only going to keep track of the range for uh, the first part of your array where there is a shared intersection. After that, you're just basically going to be keeping track of the value that you're at and whenever uh, the future ranges includes that value so the range the value itself is a range it's only you know from six to six you're just gonna stay at that six uh, but then as soon as your next range isn't included when it's above you're gonna skip to the lowest value in that range and when it's uh, below you're gonna sk skip to the top value in that range uh, so really we're looking at an algorithm that's keeping track of a range but the range is gonna get condensed to a single point after we hit the first uh, range that doesn't uh, intersects, intersect from the beginning of the array. And so like as I said before, uh, we end up with the path 33622, which is going to give us a result of 7. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, like I said, it's a tricky problem to understand, but once you look at a few examples, uh, it's actually not too bad. So let's take a look at the code. So here's our function minimum sum. Uh, it's taking as two parameters, a vector of integers L and R representing sort of our ranges and it's returning a long long which is gonna represent uh, the minimum sum that we can achieve by going through a given path. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna declare A and B. Uh, a is gonna be the lower uh, end of our range, our current range, and B is gonna be the upper end of our current range. So we're setting that just to be equal to the values uh, at the beginning of both of our vectors. and then we're initializing our answer our long long uh, to be equal to zero and then we're going to enter a for loop that starts uh, at the second element so i equal to one and it's going to loop uh, to the end of the array 
And what we're going to do here is we're just going to declare two locals to be equal to the values of our uh, lower and upper ends of our range. So C is going to be the lower end of our, our next range and D is going to be the upper end of our next range. And this is just so that we don't need to keep on typing uh, L, you know, bracket, I bracket, and then R bracket, I bracket. And we know that we're going to be comparing the A and B versus the C and D. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, check to see if there's any intersections and the way we're going to do this is just by comparing uh, the lower end of the new range with the top end of our current range so we compare to see is C greater than B if we know that this is true that means that there's no intersection and what we need to do is do a plus equal of the jump that we're gonna have to do from B to C so we're adding uh, to our answer C minus B and then we're resetting A and B both to be equal to C um, and then we do the same check uh, in an else if to see if the lower or the upper end of our new range is lower than the lower end of our current range. So if D is less than A, we know that the new range is below our current range. And so we need to do the same thing just with different values uh, in this case because we'd be jumping down. So we're going to add the difference between A minus D because we know A is greater than D uh, to our uh, long, long answer. And then we just need to reset our range to be equal both to D. So the lower and upper end of our range is now just D. Uh, if both of these uh, aren't conditions aren't met, we enter our else case, which means that there is an intersection. And so all we need to do when there's an intersection is uh, narrow it if need be. So if our C is greater than our A, that means that the lower end of our new range is uh, above the lower end of our current range. So we just need to read reset uh, our lower end to be equal to C. And we just do the exact same thing for the uh, upper ends of our ranges. If D is less than B, we just sort of need to narrow our range so that our new upper end is equal to D. And uh, this is our full algorithm. So like I said, we're only really going to be making use of uh, these conditions for the first part of our algorithm, uh, but uh, it's still going to work at the end of the day. So once we're done, we just return our answer. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which I accidentally showed a bit early. Uh, this is going to be uh, linear because we're just doing a single for loop over the length of our vectors. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.